Good morning. Welcome to the Cantic webinar series. Uh, we're going to start today. Uh, we have some exciting topics to talk about. Uh, we called it custom schedules today. So uh, Rob and I and the group here will discuss uh, the Cantic webinar series on custom schedules. We are using our new go-to webinar. So if you have any questions, please uh, chat them in the go-to webinar. Um, and we'll definitely answer them for you guys, all right? So before we begin, let's go start with some fun, fun PowerPoint uh, stuff. Uh, so this feature, while I bring it up here, was launched in the uh, 7.4 version. And it's one of our favorite versions, I think, that we have. One second here. So in, in 7.4.0, we launched the Action Scheduler, which was a fairly light version per se for Enterpass, but it had something called the Action Scheduler. The Action Scheduler allowed us to create custom events at custom times. So basically, if I wanted to create a, an event on a Saturday, for example, at a specific, specific time, I could definitely do that, or I can make it repeat every once in a while, right? So uh, this is kind of a, a, a meeting scheduler, but for Enterpass. Now this is practical now because now we want to change a bunch of things in the Cantic system, right? We want to change uh, uh, behavior without really touching schedules and holidays and so on. So what we've done is we built this feature natively into Enterpass and also available on the Enterpass uh, web. All right. Now I'm not. I didn't want to go too much into slides, but a bit of the fun stuff. It is natively available for all our controllers, our KT 400s and our KT ones, natively inside the memory of the controller. And Rob, what does that mean when I mean natively? The trick question, Rob. It means that it works without the software. That's a cool part of that is that there's no software required after you program it. So if you lose connection with Enterpass, everything continues to work, right? Now, if you have KT 300s and KT uh, 200s, don't worry, we didn't leave you behind. So when I said it was available for all our controllers with a KT1 and KT400, it's all native. With the um, KT200s uh, and 300s, it's software driven, all right? It is, uh, the action scheduler is configurable on a, um, on a schedule, a reoccurring purpose, right? So we could reprogram these over and over and over and reuse them multiple times if ever needed. So let's go look at the, one second. Let's go look at the action scheduler. So the action scheduler is available for special edition, corporate edition, and global edition. It is under operations and action scheduler. The action scheduler allows you to pick a random date of, you, of your choosing or multiple days by selecting them. And you could also have uh, weekly and monthly and yearly uh, topics if you want. You could see your entire calendar if ever needed. So you can really zoom in and zoom out into your calendar. All right. Can you guys still hear me? Yes. Rob, can you hear me? Hello. Sorry, Tom. Experiencing minor technical difficulties on my end. All right. But you can hear me. Perfect. Thank you. So if you guys can hear me, if you guys can't hear me or anything, just raise your hand. All right. Uh, so in here, uh, we have the ability of choosing a weekly or monthly basis uh, here. Uh, for example, uh, I can specify that I want on April 20th. April 20th at 10 a.m. I just go to the date that I want, and I double-click, or if I forget to double-click, I can right-click and hit Add. From the Add window, I can 
um, if I want here, make an event. So we're going to call this the uh, indoor virtual soccer game, right? Because nobody can go out. We're still in quarantine here. So we're going to call this the indoor virtual soccer game. And I want my doors to unlock and relock right away. So I can choose different actions. I can choose actions from activating and deactivating relays. I can choose uh, on my door actions and even arming and disarming my alarm panel through my system here. Now the cool part here is that it's uh, if I I could do an auto arming schedule if ever wanted here automatically, right? And I could say also to a new command that we've added is the unlock and lock command, right? The unlock and lock command is kind of a hybrid of both, which allows me to schedule a start meeting, a date, and a start end date. So for example, unlock at 10 a.m. until 12 p.m., for example, right? And this will give us the ability to uh, uh, choose for two hours. And then I could single-handedly choose any eight doors in this example of my choosing that come from any controller. It's not dependent on the controller. It can be from any controller if I ever want to do. Okay? So the benefit here is as long as you have a KT400 or KT1, you'll be able to choose these schedules, these doors in here. And then... I can also, so I pick my start date and my end time, pick my doors that I wish. Also, I can make it reoccurring. So I could say, you know what, I want on a weekly basis and I want to repeat for the next four times plus the primary one here. So I have a four time schedule. And what I like about this is because we're all using all social media, we can do kind of tags, right? This is considered a soccer uh, soccer game, right? Or football in the Europe. So I press save. So once I press save, it actually adds my event on Monday, right? And for the next five Mondays, uh, it will add it, right? If you notice carefully, I had put four, but five got added. That's because it's five, it's four reoccurring plus the primary one, which gives you a total of five. Okay. If I click, if I click on any other day or event, I get to see my, um, my actions like a meeting, right? Very simple, easy driven meeting. From here at the bottom, what I could also do is I can see my events that are occurring. Now, the cool part is, I see the description, I see what I called it, I see which doors were generated and so on. I see the action, but also I see my tag. So imagine I had a, I had a gymnasium here, I can make the next event a hockey, right? Or, or a cricket or, or a football, right? And then I can sort and filter by these events. So if I'm a, a school, for example, I can filter this down to only see what I want to see and not the other uh, items. Furthermore, if I'm a, a, a place of worship again, I could put baptisms, I can put uh, uh, weddings and other events in there and sort them accordingly when I want to see them. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the chat menu, all right? Now, the cool part of all this is you could build 999 actions for the entire system, of which 999, uh, sorry, of which each action can have 99 repetitions. So you can build many, many actions and have them repeat constantly. And so there's a lot of uh, space here for um, growth here. I went to a school somewhere in Ohio uh, for, for training once and they showed me this. And I was uh, blown how much meetings they had booked in here. Every event that the school had, had an activity in there. So very, very, very popular feature for this, all right? 
what does this alleviate? How many of us have created a, an event, right? And use the holiday menu and the schedule menu to do a one-off event. Maybe in distribution, they had to go do an inventory day on a Saturday, right? So how many of us had to uh, make a schedule on a holiday, then put a post-it on our monitors to remember to remove this um, event and holiday the next day, right? That's a lot of work for one event. With this, we don't have to create the holidays that are really uh, you know, uh, repetitive like this. You still create your regular holidays. You don't create the ones that are for special events. You just make an event and you're done with it. Okay. Now, this is great for KT uh, 400 and KT ones. But if you notice carefully, I'm going to make another one here on a different date here on the 23rd of April. I double click or right click and hit new. And from here, I have my actions. But if there's a few limitations here, first off, uh, it's only limited to the relay and door actions and eight components. I had a school that wanted, for example, that on June 24th, right, all, all students are deactivated. And he wanted all the key re re uh, readers to stop working. So we told them, okay, on, May 20, on June 24th, go press three buttons and you're done. He's like, no, no, I won't be here anymore. I need somebody to click on this button by itself automatically, and it does it for me right away. All right? So what we can do here is make a, for example, a school and event. This is a true story, guys. We did this with a customer. He was so happy. So what we go do is we go make an execute a task. And by executing a task, we specify when we want this. He wanted on June 24th. So let's go pick June 24th at, uh, uh, I think it was 7 a.m. Doesn't really matter. 07. Now the task, what was it? We can right click on the task, for example. Hit the new button, okay? And from here, we are now in our smart link menu. Our smart link menu will allow us here to create any task that we want available in our smart link. Now, I'm not going to go through all the menus of the smart link because I'm sure Rob can attest the smart link does a lot of things in here, right, Rob? So um, here we're going to build a task, and the task was. Uh, disable, for example, readers and students or visitors, however we want. So in the task that we have here, we can simply click on the little card button and say, for example, all card types of considered visitor, let's say, I don't have students, we'll call them visitors for now. We can actually uh, have their state invalid. So we can change card behavior in advance from the system on a specific date. So I created my task. All right. And it doesn't matter which controller it's at because this is cards that belong to the server. Furthermore, I could click on the little command button here. And I can choose any door event of my choosing, but it's not limited to any controller now. You can perform a task that is software driven on any controller, regardless of its type. So once I've built my task of disabling the readers, which is a bit more advanced programming, but still we kept it basic, on June 24th at 7 a.m., automatically the action will occur and the doors, the key doors will disable and the visitor cards or student cards will deactivate automatically. Pretty cool stuff, guys. Yes. Very nice, thank you. Now, uh, as we can see here, 
uh, the the actual calendar lights up when it goes ready, right? So when there's something in it, the actual date is bold. So we can see that here, and it shows that there's an event. So quickly at a grasp, I can see what's happening on my system. Now, before we get to the Enterprise Web portion, because yes, such a great feature cannot be left all by itself. We actually have it uh, on the Enterprise uh, Web. So what we could also do is, what happens if I want it like twice a week, right? Or multiple instances. So if we look carefully at our choices, if I double click or right click and make a new one, my choices are pretty simple and easy. I can make it once daily, weekly, or once a year, and obviously monthly. So if you want it on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, well, guess what? You make one for Tuesdays, and then you make one for Wednesdays separately. Very simple. It took us, what, two minutes to program a task, and then you just make uh, a scheduler, and you make another one for the system here. Anybody have any questions on the Enterprise Workstation setup? On, on the Enterprise Web, we have the same behavior. Let me open up the web here. Oh, one thing I want to mention now that we're here on the PowerPoint is that the action scheduler is uh, manageable and controllable through the security levels. So if you wish, you can turn off this feature so people cannot program it, right? Maybe the administrator or the school principal or the uh, place of worship uh, person uh, can actually do this, whereas the secretary of the school or, or a teacher cannot use this. Maybe they can see it only. They can see the events. They just cannot um, uh, create new ones or modify new ones if ever needed. And that's controllable from the Enterprise security levels also. All right. So if I go to my Enterprise web, when I open it up here, pardon me, a little delay here. So on the Enterprise web, we added the ability to do the action scheduler also. Um, on the system. So, but it looks slightly different. So the Enterprise Web, I enter my super secure login and password. And using the Enterprise version eight and higher on the Enterprise Web, actually eight ten, I apologize, and higher, we can go to the action scheduler. And in the action scheduler, I get to see all my actions in a text box format. So I get to see that Jim or one of our operators created an action to open the gym, that's what he called it, and to unlock and lock a door. And he did it 10 times. I guess he wants to go to the gym often, right? And then I can hit the add button and make a new one. The interface looks very similar, just obviously web built. And this will allow you to name the action trigger and uh, unlock and lock action. The same exact triggers as we had before, but more on the web interface. So the cool part about this is people really like the web interface and they get to use this uh, directly on the Enterprise web also. All right. So we're very happy you guys joined the Cantec webinar series on the action scheduler. Um, before I take any questions, remember to join next week on uh, Monday on our next topic. Uh, please join the Cantec webinar series link. The GoToMeeting is not, uh, link is not going to be active for long. So just use the Cantec webinar series link. All right. So if you have any questions, gentlemen and ladies, please feel free to ask that via the uh, chat here or the question menu.